Welcome to this new section on looking at creating a first person character. So now we're going to put together the knowledge that we've learned in the previous section about all of the little bits of ins and outs of Unity. Well, not all of them because it was a pretty quick overview, wasn't it? But you're going to learn a lot more. But as we put this together, you'll also be challenged on the knowledge you've already picked up. So we're going to create a first person perspective character and first person in games means that it's from your point of view like the camera is your eyes and therefore in the initial first person games all you really saw on the screen was like a crosshairs and then it moved on from there where you could start to see your arms and then the weapons you were actually holding so the one we're going to create to begin with is just one where you're looking through the camera at the scene and then later on we will attach animated arms and guns and things to that okay so to begin you need a brand new unity project so open that up and what we're going to do is create a ground plane to walk around on. So let's go our 3D object in the hierarchy and let's find a plane. Okay, so there's our plane. Now I'm just going to move that down just a little bit and you might want to resize it. So let's make it like I'm going to put 100 in the X and 100 in the Z, which means it gives you a bit of time to walk around it. The Y can be one because remember it's just a plane so it has no density or thickness I should say at all so there's no use changing that scale because it won't do anything. So our character is going to be based on a capsule. Most first person characters and in fact most humanoid characters in games are based on a capsule that then comes their collider. So let's right click in the hierarchy and we'll go 3D object and we're going to add in our capsule. So there is our player. Now you might want to move that player down to sit on the ground. It doesn't matter because we will add physics later on so that the player will fall down. If you would like, you can recolor the ground plane and your capsule with different colored materials if you want. I'm not really going to bother at this point but um, that might help you see it a little more easily. But we've got shadows and things going on here, so we should be fine. And then eventually we're not going to be able to see the capsule. Right, so on the capsule, we've got over in the inspector, we've got a transform. Now that's the thing we're going to be working with. There is a component called a mesh filter, which is a capsule. Then there is the mesh renderer. Now these two things work together so that you can see the character. When you untick Mesh Renderer, it actually turns it off so you can't see it. And if you go over into the scene view, you'll still see the capsule collider that came with your actual character. Now, when we look at the scale of the capsule, it's one, one, and one. And this is usually about the size that you work with. Now if we have a look at the mesh renderer, let's just turn it on so we can see it again. The collider fits quite nicely or in fact perfectly around there. If we go down and have a look at the capsule collider, you'll see that it's centered on 000. It has a height of 2 and a radius of 0.5. It also sits in the Y direction. If we change that to like X, you'll see that it will flip the capsule on its side there. So you'd have a different type of collider going on, but we want the one that's sitting upright. Now this height or any values that are used for like dimensions of things or weights of things in the physics or in the collider system, they're all based on metric values. So Basically, with a height of two, we're saying that our character is two meters high. Now, if you want to reduce that, that's up to you. But remember, let's just have a look if we make this bigger. See how it gets bigger, the collider itself, and it leaves the capsule behind. Now, let me just set that back to two because that's usually a good height for a capsule collider. Now, our capsule also needs a rigid body. So let's add a component and look for the rigid body and add that rigid body. And for now, we don't need to make any changes to that. 
Now we're going to add some code to our capsule to move it around and it's going to be very similar code to what we used with our blue cube in the previous section. So down in assets, right click, create C sharp script and we're going to call this our first person controller. Okay, once you've got that, open it up. Now, here's your FP controller class with a start and an update. We're not going to use these initially. We're going to put these controls down in a fixed update. So we put a void fixed update and put the squiggly brackets around it. Now, the update can occur any time within a frame. Now, a frame is when the game actually does all the calculations and that, and then draws one frame on the screen. Of course, the more calculations you've got, the slower your game runs and the slower the frames per second. This update, you don't have any guarantee the interval between each update and when it runs. With a fixed update, you do, okay? It's going to happen at the same interval each time you run it. Therefore, any movement that you have on your character, if you put it inside a fixed update, you know that it's going to move at the same rate for your entire game. Whereas if you put it in update, you couldn't be absolutely sure when it was going to be updated and the rate could go up and down, which would cause your character to have like performance issues where it might look like it's running quite fast and then your computer might be deciding to do something else and everything will slow down and, and that type of thing. So the fixed update is going to keep you moving at the same rate. To move our character, we need to move it in its X and its Z direction. Let's just go back into Unity and have a look at our capsule again. Let me select the capsule. Now, if you can't see these axes on your capsule, then just make sure you hit the W key to bring them up. The blue axis is your Z axis. Now, this is the forward axis axis okay so if you had eyes on this character they would be sitting just here and to move forward you want to go that way so moving forward means a positive change in the z if you want to move to the side then it's the x axis okay and so left and right are dictated by that a positive change to the x is going to have your character moving to the right and a negative will have it moving to the left. So let's go and put this into our code. Again, we're going to use our input get axes that we used previously. So first of all, we'll create a float for X and that's going to equal input dot get axis horizontal. So that's your left and right arrow keys. And then float Z equals input dot get axis vertical and that's your up and down keys so you then have an x and a z value uh, based on the key presses so input dot get axis is a method that gets it now the axis are values that are saved within your project settings just save this let's flick back into unity to find where all of those axes are if we go up to unity and we go up to the menu and come across to edit project settings then you get this window with all of these project settings and there's a lot of them but we're looking for the input manager which is this one here now you can see that you've got axes so let's have a look under there you'll see now that there's a horizontal axis and there's a vertical axis there's also one called fire one fire two fire three jump mouse X, mouse Y, and we will use these a little later. And these are ones that you can use inside of that input.get axis. Now, these values like horizontal, they get mapped to values that are on your keyboard or your mouse or your joystick or finger touch on the screen, whatever sort of device that you're using. Just drop down the horizontal and let's have a little look what is in there as far as the setup. So horizontal is the string of text that we're using inside input.getAxis. And you can see that the negative button, okay, so moving in the negative x direction is the left button. 
the positive button is the right button. Now we have alternative buttons, which is the A and the D keys. If you're used to WASD using those getting around in a first person game, then this caters for that as well. You'll also see that there are, are some other values you can set in here as well as inverting if you've got an inversion version access, that type of thing, which we're not going to be touching at the moment. So the default setup for Unity is basically the keys that you're used to using. Okay, so even for vertical, you've got your up and down keys or your S or your W. And if we're going to have a look at jump, what do you think you might find under there? If you're a seasoned gamer, what would you use to make your character jump? Well, hopefully, and yes, you said that it was the space bar and it definitely is the space bar that you can see there. And what's under fire one? Let's have a look under there, okay? It's left control, okay? And it's also mouse zero. Mouse zero is your left mouse key. So if you use fire one inside of one of those input.get axes, you will get it to fire. And we will actually do that a little later. So these are your input axes and you can change them in all of these settings if you wish to. But as I said, they're set up with default values that are pretty metaphorical in gameplay and you should know them. Okay, so let's now go back into our code and use these values. So under here, what we're going to do is use the X and the Z to update our position of our capsule. So do you remember where the position property is stored? Well, if we have a look in the inspector, you'll remember that it's in transform position and then with the blue cube we went plus equals and then we added a new vector 3 with the new values in it for x y and z okay so here is your challenge i'm just going to wait here for a little bit you go ahead put the values in where you think they are and if you want to test it save it go back into unity and make sure you drag and drop your script onto your capsule. In fact, I'll show you how to do that right now. I'll just put 000 in here so it has no effect. Save that. We put it back in here. Get your capsule and drag and drop FP controller over onto there. Make sure it's on there in the inspector. Then to test it out, you would press play and use your arrow keys. Of course, I've got it set to zero, so I was not going to go anywhere. Right, so back into our code. This is your challenge is to use X and Z to move your character around. So pause the video now, have a go at that. And when we come back, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, how did you go getting your character to move around? Well, the X value is obviously going to be used to change our X value. And the Z value is gonna change the Z value. And as far as the Y, we're not interested in the Y this case okay y is usually when you jump that you want to change the y and we're not doing that yet so once you've got that in there save it let's go back into unity press play and what we're going to do is try and move around well and we do we move very fast as you can see there and that means that we probably want to put in say a speed value which you usually do and then you can control at the top here outside of all our methods i'm going to put a speed in here i'm going to use a float speed equals 0.1 f which is the same value i used i think it was a blue cube um to slow down the speed so let's put multiply by speed in there and then multiply by speed in there for our x and our z now if we save it and go back here press play now, if we use our arrow keys, you will have your capsule moving. Now, you may have noticed if we move too quickly, we end up falling over because the physics system is now getting involved in our movement because of the rigid body that's on there. So when we come back in the next lecture, I will show you how to fix that.